Welcome to Electrum Online. A lot of work has gone in recently in engineering circles to come up with a good equation to find the Nusselt number. And so here we're going to give you an example of what some of those equations could look like. And we're going to use it for the flow past the vertical wall. So let's say that uh, the height of the wall is equal to 0.8 meters. And let's use that as the characteristic length. So let's say the height is equal to that. And um, notice again, we're still supposed to find the Reynolds number and the Prattle number using the same variables. Again, we're looking for limitations on the Reynolds number and the Prattle number. So let's say that on the Reynolds number, we have the characteristic length, the velocity, we have the density and the viscosity. And then for the Prattle number, we have the viscosity, we have, uh, let's see here, the specific heat, and we have the heat conductivity constant. So we come up with some reasonable values for the Reynolds number and the Prattle number. But now we need the Nusselt number. And you've seen some equations that looked a little bit more simplistic before, but let's take a look at this one. And notice the, co the exponents get to be qu quite wild in the way the equation looks. So what they've done is they've done a lot of experimentation and they try to experimentally determine what the heat flow is and then try to turn that into an equation that then can be used for a more general case. So let's go ahead and just go through the calculation of this equation to come up with the Nusselt number, which then eventually will turn into uh, the ability to calculate the transmission coefficient. So let's go ahead and plug in the numbers that we know. So the Nusselt number, is going to be equal to the quantity 0 0.68 times the Reynolds number, which is 137,255, raised to the 1 quarter power, and then divide that by, divide it by the Prandtl number, which is 0 0.7, raise that quantity to the 9 16 power, and take all that and raise it to the 4 ninths power and then take the whole thing and square it. Now, again, I've seen quite a few of these types of equations and they all look a little bit different. They all are dependent upon the various types of experiment, experimentation that they've done to come up with something that might closely match what you would expect in a situation like this. I like the old fashioned simpler equation better but this is supposed to be more accurate because it experimentally matches the actual experimental value closer and that's why they use these types of equations. Let's go ahead and see what we get for the Nusselt number. So starting in the denominator, we get 0.492 divided, oop, 0.492 divided by 0.7 and then we're going to raise up to the 9 16th power. So 9 divided by 16 equals so we're going to add that to 1, plus 1, and now raise that to the 4 ninths power. 4 divided by 9 equals. So we have a 1.305 in the denominator. All right, let's rewrite that a little bit. So this is equal to 0 0.68 uh, plus, in the denominator, we get 1.305. So we take the inverse of that, so bring the numerator, now we multiply the times, 137,255 raised to the 0.25 power. We multiply the times 0 0.63, 0 0.633. We add that to 0 0.68. Equals, gives us about 10, and then we square that, which gives me about 100. So it gives us a Nusselt number equal to about 100. So now when we add that or insert that into our um, transmission coefficient or, yeah, transmission coefficient number, so this is um, H is equal to, that would be, let's see, that would be um, K times, uh, times the Nusselt number divided by the characteristic length. So plug in the numbers, K for air would be 0 0.026, the Nusselt number is 100, and the characteristic length is 0 0.8. So that gives us a transmission coefficient of times 0 0.026 divided by 0 0.8 equals, so in this case would be about uh, 3.26. Right. 
3.26, that would be watts per uh, square meter per Kelvin. Seems a little low for that speed, but that's the number that we get out of that particular equation. Then, of course, we would plug that into the heat transmission. That would be Q equals the delta T divided by 1 over H times A. And that's then how we get the heat flow away from the vertical wall with air flowing at it at 2.5 meters per second. And that is how it's done with one of those crazy equations that tries to simulate as much as possible the experimental results they have when they make changes to the size, to the heat flow, difference in temperature, and so forth, to get something that hopefully will give them a more accurate result. I would still stick to the more simplistic equation because after all, it's not an exact science. There's a lot of variables in there that quickly change things. And so yes, for certain specific conditions, they can get quite accurate, but in the general case, we we'll might as well stick to our more familiar and simplistic equations. And that is how it's done.